Pleasant morning to everyone. Good morning. It is a privilege for us to be here this morning. God has been good to us. Amen. Amen. My tardiness on the scripture reading is Deuteronomy 7, verses 6 and 7. Thank you so much. Doc. Um, I'm very observant, and I noticed that those who came before me took their time. <laughs> So I believe in being in one accord with the church, so I'm going to take my time. Amen? Amen. Now the book that was used most when Christ was on earth was the book of Deuteronomy. And this is what he used and he quoted most from this book, the fifth book of Moses. I invite you to bow your heads with me as you pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace on this special hour to give you thanks for being so good to us. As we are about to open your words, open our minds and give us understanding. May your truth be riveted into every fiber of our lives. May it elicit from us a response to be drawn closer to you. And we will be careful to give you all the praise, the honor and the glory. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, I also forgot my glasses, so I borrowed this from Donald. It's not really mine. So this will take a little more time. <laughs> but thank you for your patience. Amen. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 6, as uh, the scripture reading, reading verse 6. Chapter 7. Chapter 7. Yes. Chapter 7, verse 6. Chapter 7, verse, reading verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord. Now, when I read this passage, now God is speaking here, amen? And He said to us that we are holy amen. unto Him. But when we look at ourselves, we are not all that, but this is what God is saying to us. Uh, this will become clearer as we go along. Unto the Lord, thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So God is saying, to us that we are holy and that we are chosen and that we are special unto himself. Now the title of this message is Chosen and we want to dissect this word and see what it is saying to us. The word chosen in the English Bible is used 123 times. 90 times it refers to the people of God. It refers to the church. So the word chosen is an ecclesiastical word that God uses. Now the, the meaning in Hebrew, the Hebrew word is kid, K-Y-D. Now the full meaning is not, is not fully known. So another word is used in place. Kaka, which means a precious stone. So God is saying that we are chosen, we are special, and we are precious, we are a precious stone. Now the word kakad is, another word is kedah, which is translated javelin. Now what does the word javelin have to do with the word chosen? You see, if you, ever, if you have ever thrown a javelin, a javelin thrower has to be focused on his target. Amen? Amen. Now I want you to stay with me. Is that alright? Yes. So God is saying to us that he has focused on us. Amen? So Mary Jane, when you were in that situation, as I was also when driving back, He did not get away from that accident or that lightning strike by chance. God has focused on us. Amen? Amen. 
So when we look back on our situation, when we get out of those crisis situations, it's not by luck or chance. God has focused because we are His target, amen? amen. So God is focused on us. Uh, we might be in, in a terrible situation and how we get out, sometimes you went driving on the road and you, you, you're not away and, and all of a sudden you said you wake up and you switch back on the lane because God has focused on us, amen? It's not by chance. I told you I don't have my glasses with me. My, the one that is tested. So it doesn't make a difference what you heard about me, what you think about me, what you thought of me. God has focused on me according to God and His Word. I am precious. I am special. I am chosen. Amen. So God is focused on me. Now in heaven, amen, it wouldn't have any proud individuals, amen. amen. So we, and I believe that God uses uh, the worst and he makes them something out of nothing, amen. Because when I read the scriptures in Genesis, when God looked out into space, there was nothing. And after speaking, and when God stopped speaking, there is a world that is fit to live in. Amen? Yes. So God can, I uh, read in the book of Philippians, when Christ became so much steps lower down to our level, and then Christ is saying, and this, is, this promise is based on His word. He made it with Himself. Amen? Yes. So we are nothing, but I will become nothing with them. And when I become nothing with them, by my strength, I will make them something. Amen? So in Christ, we are something, we are somebody in Christ. It's not based on a bargain or, it's good to see you, Jane. It's not based on a, a contract or a legal document where one party has something to offer and another party has something to offer of equal importance and you both sign the contract and make it binding, amen? But when God speaks, we are nothing, we have nothing and we give nothing. So his what his promises is based on himself, amen? Yes. If he says you are special, you are special. You don't have to worry what other people think about you, what they say about you, what you heard, what, what they heard about you. In God's eyes, we are special, amen? Yes. And he has focused on every one of us. Amen. So that's how sometimes we get out of situation. It's only when we look back and we begin to wonder, how did I come over this bridge? It is by the grace and the mercy of God. Amen? Amen. Now, in the New Testament, the word most translated, chosen, is aresko in the Greek. It means to be pleasing. It means to be acceptable. And I like that word, acceptable. Amen? So in God's eyes, we are not just pleasing, but we are acceptable. So God is not concerned about our past. He's concerned about what we can become by His grace. Amen? Yes. Now, God, our prayers are acceptable to God. We are pleasing. We are preferred. In John... 6 and verse 17, you remember that passage where Jesus said, Have not I chosen 12 and one of you is the devil? Now the word chosen there is, you listen to me. It means to search thoroughly and test. So when God looks at us, he knows everything about us because he knows the end from the beginning. Amen? He knows all the lies we're going to tell, all the evil thoughts we're going to have. He knows everything about us. There is nothing that he does not know, but yet he, he chooses us in advance, amen? We are nothing. So when the devil comes and, and tries to claim the body of Moses in the book of Jude, in verse 9, and the devil says that he is mine, the Lord has to rebuke him because regardless, you see, the devil is the accuser of the brethren. He, look at, he looks at our faults and our flaws, 
But when God looks at us, in spite of us, God chooses us, amen. Mm -hmm. We are precious, we are special, we are unique. We are value in the sight, we are somebody, amen. Remember when a woman who had the issue of blood, and she was a nobody because she was rejected, she was cast out of the church, she spent all her savings, and she was no better. And there were a lot of folks crowding around Christ. Crowding around Jesus doesn't make a difference. She rejoiced that she touched his garment. It's by touching, it's by coming in contact with Christ that he said, somebody touched me. So when we, when we are in contact with Jesus, then we are somebody, amen? So crowding around Jesus means nothing, amen? amen. God loves us because he has focused on us, amen? We are special. So never think that you are alone or God doesn't care. He has promised that he will never leave us nor forsake us, amen? amen. We are the apple of his eye. Now, have you ever rolled on the back of a pickup truck or something that, you know, the wind is in your face and you don't have eyeglasses and sometimes little particles get in your eyes, you know, little flies or little dust or a piece of grass or something? Uh, that happened to me many times. One day I went to the eye doctor back in Miami and he found a piece of tile in the back of my eye. Piece of tile. Chipping tiles. And he said, I don't, he said to my wife, I don't, I don't know what it is to feel uh, without pain. Because I thought that was normal. You know? But there was something in there that sometimes we think that it's normal, but it's not normal. Amen? Amen. So, when God says you're the apple of my eye, unbeknown to us, our eye blinks, and we avoid these foreign objects that comes our way. So God is saying, you are the apple of my eye because he has targeted us, he has focused on us, we are special. God See the danger before we see anything, because there's a battle going on over our heads for our souls, amen? If we can only see the fierce battle and the contention that is going on over our heads, we, we lock ourselves in the closet and stay there, amen? But, 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 but God has already won the victory, amen? amen? And when we are with Christ, we are on the winning side, amen? Because we are special to Him. So the word listen me means to search thoroughly and test. So God searches us, He knows us better than we know ourselves. He tests us and He knows that we fail every time. But He chooses us anyhow. God knows that we are a mess and He chooses us because the only planet that has gone a mess is this planet, amen? And Christ came down to this planet and he become like us and by his strength and his grace and his mercy he makes something valuable, he makes something precious, amen? Only Jesus can do that. And I believe somebody will say amen. What do you say? Amen. Now, the word aresco means to be pleasing, it means to be acceptable. Now, God accepts our prayers, He accepts our worship, He accepts our company, amen? God loves to be in our presence, amen?
We are high on drugs, but yet God is locked in on us. We are in the wrong house with the wrong person at the wrong time, yet God is locked in on us. Amen? Amen. And we begin to wonder how we get out of those situations. Because we are special to God. In spite of ourselves, you see, God knows if, he, if God had revealed to you that idiot you are about to get married to before you, you got married to him, you would conclude the wedding is off, honey. God spoke to me, amen? But even though God knows that, God still chooses us in spite of ourselves, amen? amen. Sometimes I tend to believe that God uses the words to be in his church, amen? And makes us somebody. So we are not here because you're good looking, amen? Not because of your righteousness or your holiness. And you, this will become clearer as you go along, amen? I told you I'm going to take my time. <laughs> God loves every single one of us, amen? So when the devil moves in and tries to claim the body of Moses, Christ said, He is mine, amen? Yes. When God be for you, who can be against you, amen? No. Now verses uh, 7 reads, The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you because you are more in number than any people, for he was the least of all people. Now look at chapter 9 and verse 4. Speak not thou in thy heart that after the Lord thy God had cast them out from before thee, saying, For my righteousness the Lord had brought me and to possess this land. But for the wickedness of these nations, the Lord has driven them out from before thee. So it is not because of your righteousness, but because of their wickedness. Amen? Their wickedness has reached to the limit. So, so, so Israel had no reason to boast. Amen? If God had a time to, to get even with the children of Israel was in the wilderness. Amen? Because if you read the book of Deuteronomy, the first 30 verses or chapters, the children of Israel complained at the moment against God 16 times. Moma after Moma against God. Yet God still loved them because God chose them. Amen? They were special, they were unique, they were valuable in His sight. He knew all the faults and the flaws, but He still chose them. Amen? Mm. And He makes them something. So, we are not the best. We are not the majority or the most in number. You know, I've discovered that the world was so corrupt when Christ came. The only place that was not corrupt was Palestine because it was where God gave his word. And before Christ came, for over 400 years, there were no prophets. But they became corrupt because they corrupted themselves with their traditions. But they had the word of God. Now, during the Dark Ages, because the Bible was not permitted to be used, it was that not only um, lack of ignorance, or shall I say, there were no inventions, there were, there, were no, there were no advancement in knowledge or in technology. But when the, God, when the Word of God is being used, there is advancement, amen? There is technology. We can go forward, amen? It doesn't matter which direction you point the arrow, you're always going forward, amen? Because the Word of God is a light. And it brings, it helps us to propel forward, amen? Yes. Yeah. So it is not because of our righteousness, but because of their wickedness, God chooses us and places them, place us in their spot. Now God is a promise keeper. God keeps his promises, amen? Yeah. The reason why he renewed his promises to Isaac and Jacob because of the promises he made with Abraham, amen? Yeah. 
and with himself. Verse 5 says, chapter 9 of Deuteronomy, not for thy righteousness or for the uprightness of thine heart does thou go to possess their, their land. But for the wickedness of these nations, the Lord thy God hath driven them out from before thee, and that he may perform the word which the Lord swear to thy fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Because of his promises that he made, God keeps his promises. Amen? Amen. Verse 6 says, Understand therefore that the Lord thy God giveth thee not this good land to possess it for thy righteousness, but thou art a stiff-necked people. Now, 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 God does not play with words, amen? He means exactly what he says. It is not because of your righteousness, but because of their wickedness, because you are a stiff-necked people, I still chose you, amen? Yeah. So God loves us irregardless. Because when God looks at us, I mean, he says all our righteousness is as filthy rags in his sight, amen? It's not talking about all the good, all the bad you do. It's talking about all the good you do. Yeah. It's filthy rags in his sight. The only thing that makes us acceptable in him is Christ, amen? amen. In Jesus, we are somebody, amen? In Christ, we are special, we are unique, we are valuable. I remember like the thief on the cross, when the thief exercised the thief on the right hand side, it had to be the thief on the right hand side because when they go back to the sanctuary, when the high priest entered the most holy place on Yom Kippur, the day of atonement, if the angel on the right hand side would lift up, then the high priest knew that his, 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 uh, his intercession was acceptable to God. Amen. But if darkness covered the angel on the left hand side, he would fall there. God had rejected him and his, his offering. So when you look at the cross, there are two things, one on the right and one on the left. So fill the top on the right, the thief that was on the right. Because before faith lit up on him, before he said, Jesus, remember me, um, have mercy upon me. And Jesus said, um, you know, given the promise today, I'm giving you the assurance that you will be in paradise. Yeah. When God looked down, before he exercised faith in him, God saw his son. But after he confessed his acceptance of Christ on his behalf, God saw two sons. And they both look alike, amen? Yeah. So when God looks at us, he sees the righteousness of Christ in you and I, amen? Yeah. Not because of us, but because of him, amen? Yeah. Based on his promises, yeah. I will make of you a great nation, amen? Had absolutely nothing to do with us. So you should never make a, deci a decision when you're on a high horse, because there are forces set in motion to bring you down. And never make a decision when you are low down. Because there are forces in motion to bring you up. Amen? Amen. When you are in a crisis situation, don't make a decision because you made the wrong decision. And when you are feeling good about yourself and everything is nice and dandy, don't make a decision because sometimes you make the wrong decision because you think you are all that. Amen. God has to direct us in our decision making. Amen? Remember the disciples came to Jesus one day and after, you know, when, before he fed the multitude with five loaves and two fishes, the five thousand men, so it had to be a roughly fifteen thousand because generally in, in those settings women outnumber men. Amen. It said about five thousand men. And when Jesus fed as a disciples, as a matter of fact, when you read the story, the disciples had a meeting without Christ. Never have a meeting without the master. Mm -hmm. And they came up with a conclusion, send them away. And Christ said, you give them some doing. Now we cannot feed people based on what we have because we have nothing. We can only feed people based on what Christ has. Amen? Amen. Now I think I said that the loaves and the fishes multiplied in the hand of Christ. Amen? So when Peter came, he got some. When John came, he got some. In 
in the hand of Peter that was just a meal. But in the hand of Christ, it's a miracle, isn't it? Yeah. So if we place it in the Master's hand, if we place ourselves in the, in the Master's hand, then we are valuable, isn't it? We are important, we are special. So when, when the devil rises up to claim us because we have sinned, God says, He's mine, amen? Please. We are somebody in Christ. We are special in Jesus. Amen. I believe this is a good message I'm going to say, amen? amen. <laughs> God loves every single one of us, amen? So Jesus took the steps as we read in Philippians chapter 2. And he made an exchange with us. He traded places with you and I. It's like, it's like you have that. Oh, your, your, your boss broke down this week when you're about to leave. So you have that load on the top of a job that is stolen everywhere. God is saying to us, I'm going to make an exchange with you. I'm going to take that what you have or that shack that you're living in. And I'm going, to, I'm going to give you a Rolls Royce. Let her post that ivory trim, tag title, and all paid for, amen. I'm going to exchange this with you, amen. He's not going to condemn you for what you have. He's just saying, I have something better to offer you. Now, now God shows us that makes no difference, amen. Because if, if I would stop here, this message would be incomplete. God choosing you and I doesn't make a difference. To complete that circle, you and I have to make a decision. Now the most important thing that you and I have is a choice. Yes. Amen. Yes. In order to complete the circle, oh, let, let, let me put it another way. When my wife and I were courting before she became my wife, we courted for seven years. And I thought in myself, because my mind was already made up. And I said to her one day, well, when are we going to get married? And she said to me, well, you never proposed to me up to now. <laughs> now, now, my mind was already made up. So I, I can remember distinctly, it was on the patio one evening. I had to get her on my knees. <laughs> and you know, the, the, the ritual. And even though my mind was made up, I already chose her long before. She had to declare herself in choosing me. That to make it binding. So God choosing you makes no difference if you don't choose him. All right. Amen. Amen. All right. To make it binding or to, to make it, what should I say? Reality, amen. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, friend of mine, God knows the ins and the ends. I'm not talking about having an no, no office in church. I'm not talking about being a deacon or an elder. I'm talking about choosing Him every single day of our lives, moment by moment. Now, I'm told, I don't know how they did the calculation, I'm told that a moment is if you take one second and you divide it up into a thousand pieces, a moment is 50, a 53 part of that thousand. Mm -hmm. So it is, it is closer than a second. So go and God says, uh, moment by moment, we go, we got to choose him, amen? we got to make him first place, first preference, number one, priority in our lives every single day, amen? Because every day is a new day. Every day we have to make new decisions. There are new challenges every day. So the prayers that I pray today can't last me for tomorrow or for the next week. We've got to surrender to him every single day, amen. Lord, I choose you this day, amen. Lead me, guide me, direct me. Let him be your leader because he has focused on you, amen. amen. So you've got to make him your choice every single day in order to, to bring this message to a close, amen. God loves us, friend of mine. That's what I'm trying to say. 
Now that's why the story of Hosea is in the scriptures. Remember Hosea? After having his morning worship uh, one day,